Welcome back to VTide and in this video we are going to set up dedicated servers with Steam Integration Kit which is a free and a paid plugin like you can get it both ways so uh, basically we are going to switch to a source engine if you don't know how to do that you can check out this video which you would be seeing on the i button you just need to basically download it from the github and uh, you should be able to build it so it's a long process but if you already did that let's continue now we are going to just generate some files and then add the target for the server and then um, basically see how to create a dedicated server session how to find it how to use the server browser and things like that so let's add a server target here copy paste one sec rename it to server remove copy remove editor and rename it as server open this up replace all the editor references with server yeah that is it let's close regenerate visual studio files i don't like i, I you don't need to regenerate visual studio files it automatically takes it maybe that's only in the case of friday but i don't think so uh, it does take it for everyone and open the project i'm going to use visual studio 2022 um, as i said in the start of the series that all the videos will be using that and go under games and build yeah so the build completed so let's open up the project pretty quick yeah and here it is so let's go back just give me a second just looking at something yeah let's go to project settings and create a new game instance i will name this bp underscore game instance and open it up now here go to like create a new event for event init uh, in it basically whenever the it's initiated it will get a call right click and add a call to parent if you're using some c++ class it's pretty useful and then add a branch oh before that let's create a timer you can use a delay but uh, just for the sake of it i will be using a timer and i can name it sik create server session yeah and before that yeah let's just put a branch because we don't want the timer to run for no reason on the client and name we'll check if it is a dedicated server session if it is just create dedicated server session it's that easy um, you can play with the default values if you want but i would suggest for the sake of this video don't play with it let it be it's <laughs> difficult to get it running in the first run itself so don't make it difficult more difficult if you know what you're doing yeah go ahead and play with it so now when this is set let's um, let me think what we need to do next yeah so that is it here where if you want you can change the level on success maybe but that's not required we are because we are going to set the session server level in the project settings itself now let's go to the project settings and here enter the server name server description and server uh, mod directory mod directory is basically the game directory uh, in the new version it's depicted better and you can just build whatever using the whatever tool you want because my uh, repo is synced with plastic on both my devices so i usually use the project launcher i use the one click deployer when i have to test it with friends although i don't have uh, as i said in one of my earlier videos um i only have few no i won't be saying anything from here so create a steam underscore app id dot text and uh there should be underscore one sec let me oh i'm not able to edit my mouse shit yeah uh, okay yeah so let's go here and huh yeah right click and add a underscore after his team and open this up and in what put put a put the steam id that your game is using and save now let's go uh, now we need to basically copy the steam libraries so go to the binaries folder 
and here you need to put the uh, steam libraries so the server can interact with the steam interface so for this what you need to do is basically go to your program files folder wherever your steam is installed you will get the binaries there so let me open up and it's in program files steam so we need to copy uh, six files in total the first two are steam client dot dll and steam is steam client 64 and two more that we need to copy are these 64 l files and both the versions of them you can just copy the exact names um, i'm too hard to pronounce pronounce that let me copy that and yeah that is it so let's go back and paste them here yeah that is it um that seems good so all the files are here let's go back and now uh let's right click and rename it now we're not actually going to rename it we are just going to copy the name and open this in command prompt and right click log so let us wait for the server to open up it's opening up pretty quick give it eight seconds where it creates the server and it started the server so now you should be able to join the server but there is an issue let me show that let's open up our game you remember where we had that find session logic we, which we made in the last session last video we have to modify that oh also remember to change the lobby session to the matchmaking session i think i did that already in the video before and that may not come out um i'm not sure why but you can just change the enum value to matchmaking session to find recreated servers so uh, as you can see it says it has a p2p id right uh, the server data shows that so we can connect to the server using this so that's not an issue let me show it pretty quick so this is my editor play yeah and if i press on start matchmaking that will not work it will give a straight error that it did not find the session uh, that uh, on error i print a very random word i don't know what that means but if i pre uh, copy the p2p id right and go to the go to the build and press tilde key and write open steam dot no steam steam dot and the id and press enter i will join the server so the matchmaking works with p2p the only thing that is not working is basically we are not able to find the session on the browser or anything like that you if you use steam browser let me uh, let's let's firstly try that also let me grab it out pretty quick as you can see we joined it pretty successfully and that is that is working and now it will time out and throw me out of the session whenever required so let me open up steam yeah steam is here so go to view and then game servers and here says there are no game servers listed for operation sparrow if i reload there are no internet sessions listed so like i close the server so you, it says there are no servers there so if if you are not seeing your game on the game servers you can do very minor thing if you don't see it here open the browser and go to steam's website and then under edit steamworks setting go to application and then under that dedicated servers now here make sure your product name and the server browser name is set and also make sure the latest version is the correct one and that matches your game thing now when this is done just go to steam integration kit and make sure this, this product name and all the three values matches uh, usually all the things have the comments on the project settings itself so you can check that and the version should always match if it is older than uh, then it will only match with the servers that it finds on the that region so let me start the server once again um, i should have renamed it and created a shortcut you know um, but who cares dash log and here it is so let's go to the steam again steam sorry steam server browser again 
Oh, and one thing, when you set this Steam's server browser name, you have to restart the Steam client or else it will not show. So now here, just refresh. And it says no internet game um, re responded to query. So it did find the session, but it was not able to join it. And the same thing would happen if I tried joining that from the game, uh, from my PC. That is because it searches a query port. It has a query port that it uh, pings and tries to check if the server is responding. You can see in the LAN it does find the server. So locally it is able to find it, but not on the over the internet. So let's fix that. I will be using uh, an AWS machine to demonstrate this and I have created a session here and the firewall is open for the ports that I'm going to use. Actually for it's open for all the ports on this AWS machine and it is also set in the security settings if you are using AWS by any chance. And as you can see, let me show, yeah, it's the session is created. So what I can do is basically if I go back to my client, let me go here. You see, I tried joining before and let me just let it just expire. Give me a second. I don't want to embarrass myself, but yeah, it's just that I joined to test before I could show it on the screen, you know, so press on start matchmaking. You will notice I get the request and the, it will join the server. So basically Steam just checks if it is able to ping that server or not. If it is not able to ping it, it will not show it on the browser. So make sure the port settings are correct and all the ports are open, whatever Steam wants to query. You can always modify the query port and if you're going to use any Linux server or maybe EdgeCap or any of the services like that, a tutorial for that is coming soon. That is it for this video. Meet you in the next one. Thank you.